How many generous people do we have in the room? Four, by the looks of things. <laughs> A lot of social psychology research supports and lords, advocates even, the benefits of being a generous and spirited individual. Those that give first, those that provide to others first, typically end up better uh, in the broader situation. They end up with better contacts, they end up with better access, they end up with better networks. They typically become more influential and persuasive. There's a fundamental reason for this and it concerns a rule that your parents would have taught you from a very young age. It's the rule that says you do not take from people without giving back in return. If a friend of yours invites you to their house for dinner, you should do what? Yeah, you should reciprocate and invite them back or at least take a bottle of wine. And the advice would be that you don't take the house wine or wine A and B. Take a slightly better wine. Similarly, if a friend of yours or a colleague, for example, at work does you a favour, you owe that colleague a future favour. And in the context of a social obligation, we are more persuaded by those people that we owe. One of the reasons for that is uh, people tend to have some quite interesting words that they use to describe people that don't play the game. You know, what do we call people that take and don't give back in return? Keep it clean. <laughs> See, you can't keep it clean. That's how bad it is. Uh, we call them freeloaders, teenagers, ingrates. Someone said to me the other day, husbands. I'm not so sure about that. Um, so the advice, uh, the first kind of piece of advice from this secret, if you like, from persuasion science is, is that those that typically look to help others first create these social obligations, these networks where people are more inclined to help them in uh, the future, in any future request. Okay, we know how this intuitively works from an individual perspective, but does it work across groups? Does it work across organizations, for example? How many of you travel on business? Stay in hotels? Read those little signs in the bathroom that ask you to reuse your towels. Okay, the number's getting smaller. But you've seen those signs, yeah? Do you know that actually if a, a hotel chain, let's say the size of a Holiday Inn or a Marriott, can increase by even a couple of percent the number of people that actually reuse their towels, the savings they make run into the millions. Okay, so you would think that hotels would understand this and have worked out the best way to persuade people to reuse their towels and linens. Uh, actually, it turns out they have got a pretty good strategy. Here's what they do. They say, think of the environment, help the environment, reuse your towels. You've all seen these signs, right? Tell me yes. Yeah. Okay. What if we were to apply a giving context to this sign, though? What if instead of saying please reuse your towels for the sake of the environment, we instead put a sign in the bathroom that says, if you will reuse your towels and your linens while you stay in our hotel, we'll donate some of the savings towards an environmental charity. A lot of companies do this now. I'm sure many of your organizations that you're here representing today have some, you know, cause-related marketing campaign, some social responsibility, right? So here's one way that we can do it. We'll donate back some of the savings we actually make. Okay. Good question to ask, of course, is how effective is this? Well, we have the data. Um, it turns out the environmental message is pretty good. About a third of hotel guests, these are single guests staying for one night or more in the intercontinental hotel group chain here, uh, will reuse their towels and linens when asked to do so for the sake of the environment. Okay. We add this additional message. If you will reuse your towels, this hotel will donate some of the savings towards charity. What happens? Yeah, it goes down. <laughs> you weren't really expecting that, were you? We weren't. Until we kind of thought about this idea of proactive giving. Notice the rule that your parents teach you is the rule of give and take. And it turns out that that order is instructive. If you say to people, if you reuse your towels, then we'll give. That's the rule of take and give. And the rule of take and give is not a rule of persuasion. It's a rule of negotiation, a rule of transaction. 
the rule of give and take would require us to actually put a message that says we're already doing our bit for the environment. We've donated towards these environmental causes. Help us recover some of the money that we've donated by reusing your towels. And in that instance, you get this huge spike. The message here is a simple one. Those that give first, back to this idea of first, typically prosper best. Typically prosper best. Looking for ways to help others first, knowing that it installs in them a powerful motivation, an obligation to give back, can be an important one. 